It's been fifty years since the War of the Wilds, and still nothing grows on the Kindlelands. The exact day the flora of the world stood up and ravaged the cities of the Greynor Peninsula is lost to the ages. After the Great Fire tore its way from west to east, turning the land barren and fallow, the otherworldly patrons, the guides, and the great cities of the Kindlelands worked together in their own way to bring a kind of peace to a war-torn people. It is a gentle, delicate balance, and something or someone threatens it. Welcome to Another Path. My name is Chase, and I'll be your GM. Today, our heroes find themselves right where we left them, finding out that their quarry has made its escape with one of their parents. As a reminder, the best way to support the show is to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash anotherpath, where we have a bunch of backer tiers, such as a Discord channel, exclusive content, and on-air thanks for donating. On that note, big thanks to Kim and Jeremy for their continued support. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down another path. So I got a new job. You got a new job, Chase. I was wondering where we're going to go with that, because I was ready to talk about my technical woes, but I'd rather you talk about your job. Yeah, so did Zach Rob. Yeah, Zach Rob. I got a couple new jobs. I've got got a new job. I'm a a banker now. I know how to open checking and savings accounts. Banker boy. By the You're... time, by the time people hear this, I should be most of the way through my training. <laughs> hey, yeah. you are our own official L Ender. Yeah. Does that make him, uh, uh, sender, C Ender. No, that doesn't work. No, L Ender, Lender. Yeah, Larry. No, no, no. Yeah, but your name's Chase. I was trying to make a joke. It didn't work. Oh, okay, okay. There we are. K Ender, K Ender. It doesn't matter. You can. You're going to be able to rubber stamp things for the government. That's true. I am. Uh, I as a part of my job, I do need to become a notary. So that's what I'm going to be doing on on Thursday. Is actually going on down to the courthouse and uh, starting that whole fucking process. I maintain that the best and f- the best and first use of your notary government powers should be to notarize official. Another path posters. Boom. <laughs> that seems like a shocking abuse of power, and we don't have any live shows coming up. So I don't care. I just want one to hang hang on my wall here. I know I'll hang it I'll hang it out but work and you know some of our fans will see it. That's oh, yeah. true. That's, That's true. true. We've got a we'll a large following at Bowling Green High School. Yes, Speaking of, uh in the world of Zach Robb, uh aside That's a from horrible starting a transition. Yeah. Uh, uh, j- <laughs> Just, just let me get there, and then you can decide on the on how the quality of the transition. Cool, hey Zach. I know where you're going. Yeah, yeah. Zach, I, go I, eat one. Zach, Zach, how you hey. doing, buddy? I'm doing good. I uh, started my job at the the museum, the mm-hmm. Minnesota Children's Museum, nice. which is a blast. Excellent. I I made a a bestie today. I don't know his name. Once we decided <laughs> we were besties. <laughs> Once we were besties, he decided to run off and tell his mom that he made a new bestie, and then he never talked to me again. So <laughs> that's the most I, Zach Rob thing. Yeah, you know. Um, but I was uh, about to be the, really insulted before I realized you were talking about a child. Yeah, he's a tiny, tiny child. I am no longer Gr- Griffin. Insulted. You still hold that hold that place in my heart. Jeez. Hence my my birthday present that I'm very excited to give you when you get here. I hate the fact that you tease these presents. It makes it gives me so much stress. <laughs> I do it again. Um, but but to tie it in, finally, Ryan, to what you were talking about. Yes, I've please been, do. I've been scenic designing a high school set, and they very quickly found the podcast. Like just like insanely quickly. So, uh, as far as I know, Sophie, you're the only one who uh, is currently listening uh, in great mass. So hey, here's your shout out. What's up, Sophie? How hey, you Sophie. Doing? Hi, Sophie. Hey, you, you're doing a good job painting. I really appreciate you. <laughs> hey, hey. The painting will be done by the time this comes out. Yes, it will yes. be. Well, and- you, did, you did a good job painting. Way to be. Colonel Coppersot's office is quiet, but for the sound of rain splattering on copious glass. All eyes are on Mordecai watching for a reaction. The shifter stands, stock still, 
in stunned silence. Clearly not scared, but confused. The rain patters on windows, and nothing happens for far, far too long for anyone's liking. The colonel, seeing Mordecai is still processing, takes command of the room. She reaches down to her desk and unfurls a map, revealing a village. This is ground. One of the few Lumbertons left this side of the wall. About two weeks ago, we started noticing some odd behaviors about the village. Strange lights in the trees. Noises. And then a week ago, somebody went missing. The general likes to keep tabs on our neighbors. He likes to be involved. I'd stop him, of course, but he's usually right. So, when he told me that he expected Forest Lord activity, I brought in the best. She gives Mordecai a knowing look. While he and I were having the meeting, I was pulled away. When I returned, I found that not only was your father gone, but the general had left his perch. By the time I got to requisitions, he had already left into the mountain pass with our most rugged wagon, stout horses, and enough paint to make bull work look like the Geitworth Academy. I need you three to find your father, pacify whatever flight of fancy has overtaken the general, and bring them both back here so we can get this transfer done and be done with it. He took him. What does that even mean? Roll an Arcana check. Christ. At least I'm not Jackson. Huh. Uh. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> the very, very small number of times that the Wanderer has done something with your body, you have always had the opportunity to say no. Mordecai is just kind of standing there, kind of, kind of like you said, just... Not quite sure what to think. Right. Um, uh, Colonel, um, we may need a, a guide or a something, or are we just taking a map and going? There is actually a direct road from here. It's rough. It's a little dangerous from Fine. time to time. Eh. But. How long? Uh, depends on how you go. If you uh, travel light, you could probably get there in about, uh, let's go ahead and call it six hours, yeah. eight on foot. You got a map? Of course. We've got this map right here. Uh, Colonel will need three horses, Mm -hmm. uh, rations, Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, any sort of uh, military order that we should be taking to uh, Mordecai's dad or something like that to snap him out of this, or are we doing that on our own? Well, quote-unquote snapping him out of this, I suppose, uh, is going to be actually listening to what the general had to say. Uh, From what I saw, there wasn't a struggle when he left the room, which means the general told your father something he he didn't tell me. Great. So we're going to, we're going to go to this city, this, not even a city, this town, this hamlet. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to this hamlet and we are going to find your dad, Mordecai. Yep. I promise you, we're going to find him. And then we're going to get the general out of his head and into your head. Yep. And everything will be fine. And I'm going to have a good long talk with both of them. To be clear, Mm. you do have to bring the general back here No, I got it. Okay. So we have to get the... There's there's another step in there, but it... Understood. All right, can we go, please? I, I hold out my hand for the map. All right, and she... Furls it up, hands it to you, reaches down next to her desk and pulls out another map and hands it to you. Um, this is the village and the way to the village. I take them. I give the most half-hearted salute of my life. Loud and clear, ma'am. And I turn and I walk out the door. All yeah, right. no, I, I'm, I'm like on Mordecai's heels. Now it is fairly late in the day. Um, you are afforded quarters here yep. if you want them. I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. I I snap to it, bring myself back to attention to salute, ma'am. Um, any reason why we shouldn't leave right now? I recognize when somebody has been dried off in a hurry. Uh, you've been traveling all day, and by the time you get there, it's going to be, at best, probably three or four in the morning, and you'll be too tired to do anything anyways. 
Might be worth staying the night to gather your strength and head on out. What's the name of the town? Uh, you are going to the city of Ground. Ground? Ground. It, ground. Right. Uh, well, uh, we'll probably stay the night then. Is there a contact in Ground? Do we have a military presence? Is there a leader? Look for Mr. Sebulwark. But he's not our contact there. He's just there now. Is there... Do we know who the leader of this town is? There is the mayor. Mayor King, oddly enough. Mayor King. Someone thought mayor. that was funny. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, ma'am. I'll see you to my compatriots. I assume that horses and stuff will be ready for us to go in the morning. Absolutely. Thank you. And I turn around and I walk I walk out after Mordecai is here. Okay. You have the evenings to yourself. Um, there's uh, plenty of places to grab a drink here in the tower. Um, uh, there's also plenty of military establishments as well, training rooms and the like. Um, you can also just kind of wander the tower itself, or you can uh, rejoin the final flight. I actually like to have a like to have a moment with Zephyr if you don't mind. As you follow me out, Zephyr, like. Mm -hmm. You see probably, like, the hardest set to his jaw and, like, look of determination that you've probably ever seen on Mordecai before. He shows zero signs of stopping. Like, he is making a beeline for the exit and is looking to leave now. So I think uh, Zephyr's going to put a hand on your shoulder, um, and I know that you're probably going to try to shake that off. He pauses. Okay. What? As much as I would like to go this instant... We are tired. We are worked to the bone. All of my energy has been spent getting us up that mountain. I assure you that yours is probably just as spent. We need to rest. We are no good to anyone if we are not rested ourselves. I know that you know this as well. And... As much as you need to go find your father, you also need to take some time. And I guess I'm going to try to roll persuasion. <laughs> sure. Yeah, go for it. I'll roll a charisma save. That is 16. Yeah, I rolled a 12. 13 plus 3. <sighs> I haven't seen my dad in, I don't know, a couple years. And this is the first thing I hear? What? How am I supposed to take that? <sighs> Mordecai. Yeah? As we have delved farther into whatever is happening here, things have become astronomically more complicated. From what I have heard from you, your father seems to be a good man. Whatever he has done, I am sure it is for the best. <laughs> he thought that what he is doing is probably right, and has taken the general to be safe, to see what is happening in ground. I, I'm sure it is not for some malicious purpose, but for now we need to rest. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's, uh... <clears throat> Final flight staying at third sheet, I think they said. I think Jeremiah said. I'm gonna go. Yes, I will head over there shortly. I need a bit of a, a little moment by myself. And Mordecai glances over his shoulder to the memorial. Yeah. I think we all do. And I leave. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Zephyr's going to go and he's just going to hang out at the memorial for a bit. And Ryan, what is Jackson up to? Could, could you describe the memorial, Chase? Absolutely. So the memorial looks like one of the pylons of the wall. 
It's like a big tower with curves that go up all throughout. It is shaped that way so that it is magically resonant because the wall isn't just a wall of stone. It is also a wall of fire. And I did not intend for that to be like a weird Game of Thrones mirror, but here we are. <laughs> uh, it is magically charged so that the plants cannot cross it. It is a literal firewall. C-34 was the pylon that was destroyed uh... in this. It is the greatest attack against the wall since it was finished. Every one of you guys was there. Mm-hmm. Jackson walks up to uh, the memorial... Uh, and uh, is looking at a, a, a different side of the pylon and uh, just is uh, standing there and going over I, I'm imagining names inscribed mm-hmm. the entire pylon is inscribed with the names of the dead Woof. Um, just going over name by name by name um, you can see a a, a weight that is uh, just seems to like it's pressing down on him with every name he reads and turns turns the corner around and sees Zephyr. Oh. Hi, Zephyr. Oh. I didn't realize you'd be here. Zephyr, you see him, like, he, like, brushes tears away um, as, like, you catch him trying to sort of maintain his composure. I, had, I did not know that um, anyone else was sticking around. Well, well, it's uh, this is where the memorial is, so this is where I've got to pay my respects. So you are there too. Yeah, Jackson taps his uh, captain's insignia, and mm-hmm. upon further inspection, you see very uh, in- engraved in it, hard to see, but still there. It says C-3-4. I was there, and they gave me a medal. They gave me a medal and a fucking title. The things that happened were... This nation that we work for, we fight for, is, is broken, Jackson. It might be, it might not be. That's not my call. I just know that... What's on the other side is too bad to let in. There's a reason the wall's there. Some things just... Some things absolutely cannot make it through that wall. And I don't... I don't like choices. I know you love what you do, Jackson. And this land, but... When I look at this, when I look at, I look at the the men and women who stripped me from my family and turned me into whatever the hell I am now, I I just wonder if this was, if this place is even worth fighting for. It's all we've got. It's not perfect, but it's... Look, I'm not gonna lie to you. There's a lot of things that our government does and our king does, and it's not my job to say whether it's right or not, but some things don't sit right. Why isn't it your job, Jackson? When the people become complacent and and just bend to the will of their government, that is how things get to the way they are now. I know I shirk off what has happened to me, but I was stripped from my parents, forced from the age of five to fight for a nation that hates me, turned into a living weapon. And then the day of this, I look at this, the day where that living weapon became so out of control that I killed. As you, he hasn't looked at you the whole time that you've been talking. He's been staring at one place of the wall in particular, um... A, a, a very large uh, chunk of names that is like in like one section of the wall. Sure. 
In the fight, the top of the wall was damaged. My team was sent in to clean up. In the fight, I lost all control of myself. Such blind rage. And that chunk of the wall that was barely hanging on was just hanging over a large group of their forces. And I broke it off. A large chunk of the wall. And sure, it fell and crushed dozens of soldiers on the other side, but the twenty or so men that fell off the wall with it? Was that worth it? Was that worth all of this death? And he he's probably on the verge of a full breakdown. Um... And is probably near unintelligible, um, because he's he's probably real crying and stuff. I get it, but that was you. You're the one that broke off the wall. I I had no idea. I'm the one that gave the order to retreat. Our captain was killed early on and the chain of command became broken and no one was doing anything. No one was making a decision. No one was stepping up and I... I made a call and we held the wall. Nothing got through, but... A lot of good men out there that if I'd given them a little more time, maybe they could have made it, but they didn't. And I had no authority to make that decision, but I did it anyway. And afterwards, somebody somewhere decided that I needed that authority, and they retroactively made me a captain in case anybody asked questions so that all of the orders from that awful day would legitimatized and that's never sat right with me and I mean I'm I was only there for another, another six months and then my, my my tour was up and I I left and a lot of a lot of them a lot of the higher ups I, I think they just expected that I would be a lifer here and it, it those decisions are where lo- that many lives hang in the balance. Those are those aren't my decisions to make. I don't. And then to hide it, it now for some patron damn reason we've got this authority now where we're we're collecting the patrons. We're trying to save our country from something something old and we have to make all of these decisions and I don't want to I don't you remember when when you got Carrie yes remember how he said we could wake him up yes I wanted to so bad I saw planes watch being saved I saw I saw me making the right decisions, and then I just saw a simple life, family, and just making planes watch better, and enjoying, enjoying the time that we have. And, and I said, I said no, and now I'm an elf, and we're collecting patrons, and we're making decisions that affect thousands upon thousands of people. Jackson, do you want to know why I said no? Why? Because what was shown to me, what I was promised, would be worth nothing had I not done it myself. What we have been through has made us better. It has made us realize what we truly want. And the only way we are going to get it is if we fight for it. And I think, um, Zephyr stands up. 
We are going to collect these patrons. We are going to stop whatever the hell is trying to break through the wall. And when it is over, and Zephyr reaches out his hand to you, like for a handshake, you and I, we are leaving this life. We are going to make our way. And we are going to be goddamn happy. I promise you. I mean, I hopefully I can bring Addy too. That'd be nice. But and I, I <laughs> God damn out. it! I reach out. I reach out. We 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 bro shake and. There it is. Now, um, we should. Oh shit! We should. Hey, did you stop Mordecai from leaving? No. <laughs> He didn't just, just like, his dad's gone, and his dad's got a patron in him, and that's our job, and we got to fix that. And well, uh, Mor- I, I, did Mordecai I, leave? Do we need to go track him I down? Think I, I think I persuaded but, uh, psst, him to go back to the final flag. Jump cuts of Mordecai descending the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, All right. Here's, so, here's a question for Chase. Yeah? Um... Damn. So man. this is just in, in like a head cannon that like the the taboo magic, mm-hmm. you know, warlockery, all that stuff. Like in my head, like we have some sort of like patch or something that like marks us as like oh one hundred percent, yeah. I think Zephyr's gonna gonna tear that off, um, nice, and, and 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 leave it at the the foot of the the thing. Yeah. Um, for, uh, for the deep, it is just a, uh, it's a seascape. Mm-hmm. Pretty simple. Like, it is just like, you know, it is a patch bisected by waves. You grab the patch and you, you rip it off and it's a clean rip and you just leave Wait, it at you, the Wait, you know that scene in Spider-Man 2 where Tobey Maguire saves Mary Jane from the car that's crashing through the window and then he realizes he has his powers back? Mm-hmm. And like so, it, like he takes his glasses off and like dramatically slow mo drops them, right? <laughs> Something like that, where like he gotcha. dramatically just like <laughs> what a pull! Down. That is, oh boy, that was guys, that was that was a that long was walk for a small drink ago. of water. <laughs> Does anybody have anything specific they would like to do before you leave Concentre? I mean, I just had a, a, a nice emotional moment with both of my boys here, so <laughs> like, did. I'm feeling pretty good. Mordecai is is explicitly he is he is intentionally keeping his distance from everybody, party and final flight included. Okay. Like he is sure there. This is this is the most like introspection. That's kind of happened, like, despite all of this sort of world changing Ooh. and and huge personal changes, this has shaken him. And you know when you're in the in IRL, when you're in the shower, and you have all those imaginary arguments that you coach yourself through, like if they ever happen in real life? Sure. Mordecai is coaching himself through, in his head, every possible outcome of the conversation between him, his father, and the general. That's mm-hmm. fair. That's okay. Good. Where where are you doing this? I'm at are you, I'm at the third you, sheet. Did, um, I'm not. Okay. I've got maybe a beer. He's not drinking heavily. Um, but he's just kind sure. of kind of off to him off by himself. Maybe sitting by the hearth, just okay, taking it in. Um, as you're you're sitting there, you kind of feel a presence about you, and you're looking into your beer. And you look up, and sitting next to you is Cameron. Do you want to talk? I kind of, like, shy away from him for a second, and just kind of side-eye at him. No one else can see me. No one else will hear you. It's fine. Better than talking to yourself, though. I suppose. Um. For what it's worth, I'm pissed, too. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if I'm pissed I'm just I'm curious really? cause I'm pissed <laughs> if if you knew my dad you would know that this isn't terribly out of the ordinary but as far as I know he's never really concerned himself with the patrons or really concerned himself with business this side of the wall I mean he's he's a military man through and through and 
has spent most of his life on the wall or beyond it. Mm. So why he's in some offshoot village off a of Concetre with the general, I haven't the foggiest idea. And I mean, yeah, I guess I'm a little pissed. You could have written a letter. Hey, Mordecai, I'm coming to Concetra. You're in despair. Let's meet up, have a drink, but let's go fishing. Fuck. I mean, it's a couple of days distance. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bug him too much about that, but my brother has a post. We all have our posts. We don't leave our posts yeah. unless it is vitally important. And I have yet to see an ounce of evidence that this is anything more than some sort of flight of fancy for my f- fucking brother. <laughs> and my dad's post is the wall. And he shakes it off. I'm sorry. I I shouldn't get mad. It's not... It's unbecoming. I mean, you said it yourself. You are a fiend. Yes, but I like to keep it in check. <laughs> Do you have any... Even theories? Suspicions? Whatever it was, it must have gotten my brother pissed. That's the only thing. Because my brother's a lot of things, but he's not... Like I said the other day, he's not dumb. Like the colonel said, he's usually right about military matters. It is very probable that him... And whatever he and your father are doing are is important, but that doesn't make me not mad at him right now. All right, well, when we figure out whatever has your brother so pissed and my dad so fired up, you take all that anger, you turn it into hot and spicy fiend fire, and we'll roast up whatever the problem is. That'll have to be good enough then, won't it? Yeah, because at this point I have no idea what the fuck is going on! God! Uh, uh. And the two of you kind of r- quietly rage by the fower for a little while. <laughs> Alright. Uh, and uh, Zephyr and Jackson. Anything else that you two wanted to do tonight? No, I mean, I'd probably pop over to wherever the Final Flight's staying and just go to rejoin them for the night. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe try to play some music to lift my spirits a bit. Like, not, like, in front of people, but, like, i probably, like, grab a drink and sit, like, on the stoop outside and just sort of sure. pick and... Mm-hmm. Roll me a performance check you at pl- disadvantage because you're distracted. You play the... You play the slow bar theme. Uh, it's an 11. It's... You play what's in my playlist as tavern pr- uh, dash nights. <laughs> <laughs> Not Tavern Dash Lively. Um, yeah, you 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 pick out a jaunty tune, but not too jaunty. You're not feeling super jaunty, but um, <laughs> you pull yourself away from the moment, and that's nice. And that you need that. Five percent jaunt. All right, Jackson, what are you up to? Uh, I uh, follow Saphir back and check in with him and Mordecai, and kind of and give Saphir. Suf- uh, on the way back, Saphir and I talked and uh, decided that he would uh, keep an eye on Mordecai for the night, and I was going to go get my Type 4 right now so mm-hmm. that I could make sure that everything was ready to go so that the instant Mordecai is awake and ready to go, we're gone. You all disperse off, and uh, you you get your Type 4. And when you wake up from your Type 4, you, uh, you go through your morning, your quote-unquote morning routine, you know, you do your stretches, <laughs> um, you do your, uh, you, you get your cup of coffee and, uh, you, uh, you check your pack for the letter and there is a response from Addy. Hey. Yay. Dear Jackson. Sorry it's been a while since I've written. Master B finally came back and with him came his familiar, the dumbass bat gimbal and he stole the parchment from me, so took a while to get back. I'm glad everything worked out in Plains Watch. I know it's really close to your heart with it being your home and all. I don't know what will happen if anything bigger than what happened with Gateworth before happened again. I don't know. Anyway, I'm glad that guy is okay, and I'm glad that she was able to uh, 
turned the petrified people back into normal people and, and fixed everything like you said. You say you're an elf? Um, I mean, I'm a half-elf, so it doesn't really bother me. I'm sure you'll get along better with my mama now. Um, anyway, I, I really hope I get to see you soon, and less stakes seem like a good idea. Unless, of course, we run into a vampire. Do stakes even kill vampires? I haven't read up on that. I should do that. I should get a book on vampires. Anyway... I'll let you get back to it. I know you got a lot of important things to take care of. I really miss you, and I do hope I get to see you soon. XOXO, Addy. Jackson goes to respond, but he's got to take care of Mordecai first and take care of this patron business first, and maybe he can respond uh, on the way to ground, but he's got to go get the horses. So he rolls the scroll back up, and puts it away for later. You know about where Requisitions is here. Specifically, Livestock Requisitions is actually kept a little bit away because Requisitions typically would be within the tower. However, you know from previous experience, there is a nondescript warehouse just outside of the tower that uh, you make your way to. And the place is... You know from previous experiences that horses don't live in towers. <laughs> I didn't want to put it like that, but yes, they do very poorly. <laughs> There's a lot of steps, and it's very tall. You go outside to the nondescript warehouse, and it is filled with wagons and horses. To a fault, really. Just far too many horses and far too many wagons. Um, this is, you know, Concentrate is where... It's where the military meets. It is the center point for the entire peninsula. For better or for worse, this is the best place to disseminate stuff. So you have your pick. Uh, they knew you were coming, and uh, the night person grants you whatever supplies you're going to need. I throw my rank around a little bit. Of course. <laughs> to make sure we get actual war horses trained for combat. Make sure we, uh, and I make sure that we get. Uh, the, uh... Mine is fine. It's got to be trained for combat, but I make sure that we get horses for Zephyr and Mordecai that um, are used to spell work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the like. Um, so uh, uh, we get those, get them all saddled up, ready to go, give mm -hmm. them a once over, check their teeth, uh, make sure all the packs are filled, supplies and rations, anything we might need. And I make sure that the uh, 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 the livery that their tack is good tack tack well i make sure the tack is good but i also make sure that it Barding. is um fully decked out in uh official colors and regalia mm -hmm. um to give us more of a presence absolutely and then i uh, as they're all once everything's all together and i i just kind of take them back up the road and hang out outside and just wait mm -hmm. just wait all right. Read my book. Um, Read my cleric book. You were right. It's livery. All right. One, one thing real quick. I'm going to do a quick roll because I haven't gotten to roll with my dice tower on mic yet. Uh, you you pull some horses and um, you get the best ones that they've got. They typically tend to keep the magic accustomed horses in bulwark where most of the mages are centered. Uh, but you, 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 you pick the ones that have the most battle experience, which is about all you can hope for on short notice. This is about probably three in the morning when you're handling this. Um, the other two, hold on, let me, I need a D4. I need to see how many hours everybody's sleeping tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you not many. Mordecai is up at the crack of five. Um, Zephyr is up mm -hmm. at six. And uh, y'all are just kind of anxious. My weird soldier instincts are kicking mm -hmm. in. And y'all are just kind of anxious to get back out on the road and get this situation solved. Overnight, the... Oh my god, I just had an idea. Okay. Sorry. Has it been a week since I've done my tiny pony? Yeah, yes it has. If it's Last. been two weeks since Plane Watch. It has. Yeah? I think I did it on the road. I think I did it on the road out, outside the announcement. From has the it, end has to it been despair, weeks since but then. we've gone to, from there to despair and despair to here. 
and up to the forest. It's got to have been at least a week. I, I would say it's been about a week. It's been a week. Before I go to meet anybody, I wake up, I, like, eyes bulge to this idea. I I take the tiny pony out, I set it on the floor, it manifests into the, the lovely little Shetland pony that is Benjamina. I write a letter that simply says, Dear Dad, what the fuck, Mordecai. I put it, I give it to Benjamina. Go find my dad. Mm-hmm. Off with ye. Scritch, scritch, scritch. Clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop. And it's still super early in the morning, so you kind of doze back off, and the second you doze off, Benjamina is gone. <laughs> yes. Darn. That's um, my girl. Tiny pony. An hour later, you feel a wet nose nudging your arm as you have fallen back asleep. And it's Benjamina... And she jostles her back, and the uh, the side flops open, and uh, there is a response. Yeah. And you open it up and unfurl it. On the top, it's uh, dash M. Using the old alias, find me. Be discreet, please. Dad. And it's it's sorry. It's signed with his alias, or it's tell. He's telling he's me telling you. I'm using, using my old alias. alias. Oh, he's using his yes. old alias. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Fucking shit. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> hey, one bit of information that I don't know that I think I would know at this point. Yes. What rank is Mordecai's dad? So Mordecai's dad is um, we would equate it to about a colonel. Okay. Uh, Black Ops, which is what he is and what he was, uh, do not tend to use rank in the same way because it can also give them away. Um, well, however, that's actually a very excellent point. Because my dad was was that, would the boys know that? Know what his rank is through insinuation and implication, and how you've been talking about him. Um, you could probably rough up that, uh, that Papa Sable work was fairly high up there. Hey, guys, 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 wake up. I got the horses. You ready to go? Uh, yes. Mordecai comes downstairs like it's fucking first day for school. He's ready to go. <laughs> the axe is all shiny. The, the pecs are all shiny. The the chest bush is full of musk. <laughs> <laughs> the best kind of... I'm not going to finish that sentence. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the journey is going to take you the better part of a day over pretty rough terrain. This incredibly oppressive rain from yesterday has been replaced with a clear, blazing, late autumn sky. Oh, quick. Sorry. Real quick. I, at the very least, tell the final flight that we're going to be gone for a little bit on wink business just so that they know we didn't apparate or turn into ghosts jeremiah nods and appreciates your considerations like well we'd rather go with you but if uh if you're going into military work then um ain't shit i can do about it yeah it's a little personal this time i mean it's all kind of been personal but it's like me person anyway bye bye don't die okay carry on the journey takes you a better part of a day over rough terrain. It's pretty warm up here, actually. Do you guys decide to break for lunch, or do you keep pressing through to try and uh, make as much time as possible? Um, uh, give me a moment. Mordecai's vote is forward. I yeah. failed a constitution check, so I think my tummy's grumbly. I will feed you on the road if that's what it takes, God damn it! That's all I ask. Is Let's, for keep Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay. okay. <laughs> Um, I would like everybody to make me uh, perception checks. Actually rolling dice. Hey. 15. Uh, 13. 11. Okay. So highest there was 15. Mm -hmm. Mordecai, you are the one actually leading the path, and you are the one yep. that hears it first. A weird, discordant song that is somehow entrancing. I'm going oh. to need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. All of us are just Mordecai. Kristen knows what this is. Twelve. You 
are almost drawn into the song oh. when you snap out of it and you look up. Harpies! From up over top of the mountain, you see ten shadows oh my goodness. lash over you. Jesus Christ. Let's roll initiative. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at anotherpathpod, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash anotherpathpodcast. You can support our efforts by donating at patreon.com slash anotherpath, or by giving us a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can find me on Twitter at TQLavi. Ryan at Ryan underscore Albrecht, Griffin at Griffpole, and Zach at that guy Zach Rob. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode, and until then, remember that strength can be found within ourselves, our friends, and our futures. 